So here I'm just making my custom curtains and um, this is what they look like right here. I've had to join several curtains together, three curtains actually, to get the length that I need for this 14 foot ceiling. So I couldn't find any curtains that were under $500 that were custom that I liked. So um, I decided to make my own and I already have one long curtain done. And uh, right now I'm just making this one. So what I'm doing here is I took the hem out of one curtain to get my 84 inches. And then I took the other curtain here. Let me cut this off. Um, put my pins in the seam, made my straight line chalk line adjustment here. Um, I'm going to trim all this off in just a minute. I'm going to go ahead and do a straight stitch. Now I'm going to do my zigzag stitch. But anyway, this stuff unravels really badly. So, and again, I'm working on an older machine, an, old, an older singer. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set my presser foot to a closer stitch, a zigzag stitch, a wide zigzag stitch, and that should help this from ever, you know, from opening and shutting all the time and maybe rubbing on the windows or the uh, door or the window casing. And as it rubs on the window casing and things like that, this will keep this from fraying and looking bad. This will help these curtains last longer. So we're going to go ahead and now we're just going to do a large zigzag stitch. You might have to adjust your uh, presser foot here at the top. And I'm just following my presser foot along this uh, the seam line. The bait is not perfect, but it doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm just cutting the strings off here on the back of the... There we go. All I know is I'm saving myself a lot of money by getting curtains that I liked in this nice silver. It's going to look really good with that blue-gray wall. And if you want, you can trim this up. I'm not really going to. That's just, just we'll just give it more time to fray. I mean, without it. This is 140 inches. I should say 140 and a quarter inches long and it ended up being a little bit longer than that because I wanted it to kind of spray out on the floor and be a little bit longer and so far I've had that. So what I'll do now is I'll open this up and then I'll measure the length from the other curtain that I used and it was about 18 inches. Then I'll figure out the width of the bottom curtain and I'll add that to the bottom. And if you hold on a minute, I'll finish sewing this. We'll be right back and I will show you the other curtain hanging up. We'll be right back. Okay, I've got the top curtain with the grommets here at the top. Let's see if you can come all the way up here. See that? And I know that my measurement was from the top of the rod. So we're going to take the top of the grommet measurement right here. The rest of that will be considered a header. And that's where I measured from the top of my rod down to the floor. Now I took the seam out. It just ripped out really easily. Opened this up and trimmed off any end you know, any jagged edges. Took the other half of that of that second curtain and now I've sewed it on to the bottom. And you can see it kind of has a, I mean, it's just the way they sewed it together because that was the top, that was the bottom. It's just the way the light looks in here. It isn't one lighter than darker. It, it, it'll be fine. Now I've got about 18 inches of this one I have to cut off. And then I'll be adding this curtain and I'll be turning it right sides together and I'll be sewing this finished edge of this curtain to this cut edge of this of this center piece, the center curtain here. Okay? And when I'm done with it, and since all these seams on here are all, all the way done, all I have to do is sew one seam and then the bottom's already hemmed and the top's hemmed. Everything's ready for this curtain. Okay, now. I've got my measurement, so I have the same 140 and a quarter to 140 and a half inches down to here. And I took another tape measure and I've ran it down here on this side to make sure that I'm pretty square. Now, the thing about doing this was that this curtain, pre-made curtain, its width, see I ran it this way, the, the cord in the hem for the base of the curtain is actually down here and the other part to go over the rod is actually up here. The header of the curtain is up here. Now, there is an up and a down to most patterns. No other than checks and a few things. 
this wasn't so bad. You can get some sheen difference, but it's fine. But this curtain, I couldn't run this way because it wasn't as wide. It was only, what was it, John? It was only 40 inches wide, I think. I think this curtain was 40 inches wide, and I think this one was 50. Like 48, maybe, maybe 48 inches wide was this one. So this one, I couldn't turn and uh, make the pattern upright. So what I did is I took the header part to give it a nice interior finish when I opened the drapes because they're both lined. This has like a, a lining that comes with it, like a blackout curtain, and this is lined with a black satin. And that's fine. This is going to be below the windowsill. You're not going to be able to see it anyway. You know, when it's open or shut, you won't see the difference between the black and the white. From outside, I mean. All right. So now I have this curtain the way I want to sit it. If I turn it this way, the pattern looks upside down. So I turned it this way and the pattern looks more upright. You know, I could either run it this way or this way. It wasn't wide enough to run this way. It only came to about right here. So I had to turn it sideways. And again, when I shut the curtains, I want the finished header edge on the inside. This side right here, I'm going to cut one inch larger and I'm going to give it a half inch uh, roll. That way I've got the same roll that will match up to the curtain. So I'll go ahead and put this right sides together. I'm going to cut this one. I've got my length. I'm going to add a half inch seam, well, I'll probably about three quarters of an inch seam allowance on this one in case I make a mistake. This one right here I'll do a half inch roll, a half inch turn, and then I'll put it right sides together, and then I'll come back and I'll sew it, and we'll hang it up on the left side of the dining room window, okay? It is a lot to do. Ooh. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's not a lot to do. It was easy to do, really, to make your own custom curtains like this. Um, I call these semi-custom because I didn't have to really do any of the grommets or anything. This was already done for me. But any of the curtains that I liked, they weren't long enough. You know, it's hard to find a custom, you know, almost 13 foot tall. My ceilings are 14, but these curtains are almost 13, 12, 13 feet tall. So I had to figure it out. So anyway, this is how I did it when you see the curtains, when you see them up. This is how I did it. All right, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to just put the camera down and I'll let you watch me finish this up. All right, be sure and hit that subscribe button. Come along for the ride because we have a lot of projects going on on this remodel. And here we go. We got some extra material now for some pillows. It'll be beautiful on my sofa. Or even some tie backs, if you want to do tie backs. Now I'm just going to sit here now and I'm going to figure this out here. Okay. There we go. And then I'll do that all going all the way down. And I'm going to fold this forward. Well, hang on. I gotta come over here. I'm gonna mark my length here. I already did that. I'm gonna add my three quarters of an inch. I already did that. I'm gonna peel this back. And I gotta see where I made the other cut here. So I'll tuck that in so I can see my which way I'm heading. And I'm gonna use this as a straight line now. Okay. This is a stretchier fabric here, so. But this is nice because I already have all the finished edges on this drape, so all I gotta do is finish one edge out and sew them together. Look at that, went right to it. Perfect. Now I'm gonna take this one. Looky, leftover material here for an armchair or something. I don't know, for, for a cushion on the uh, seats of the dining room table. A flip. buckles in this uh, in this looser fabric here and I'm just using corsage pins I find that they work best for drapery I hope 
hope you guys go ahead and try to uh, make your own curtains. This is where it helps putting in that pin right here because that way um, I don't lose the squareness. So when I open this, I've got a nice straight curtain. And remember the stretchy stuff's on the bottom. Let's straighten out our um, straighten out our needle for a straight stitch. Make sure you have plenty of bobbin thread. Nobody likes running out halfway down the line. Adjust your pressure foot pressure if you have to. I had a lady write me not too long ago and she said, you know, you don't have to use the reverse button on the sewing machine when you sew. And then I saw her making a project and her project fell apart. And I was like, you have to backstitch. In most cases, unless you're quilting or it's a special project, you should backstitch. This locks your stitches and it's very important on a straight stitch especially. So lock that stitch in. I don't know about you, but I don't like going back and fixing something. I like it to last me many, many years. Now you can see here, I'm just using this, um, this seam here to follow along here for my guide. That will ensure me a nice straight seam. There we go. Be sure and trim off any pieces. Just trim off any pieces you may All have. Right. When I get this uh, this uh, piece of curtain sewed onto here with a nice, see that gave me a nice finished edge for the back side, and that will handle rubbing up against the uh, window really well. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a zigzag stitch just like we did before on that last seam. We want this to last us a long time. Make sure that your fabric underneath is nice and straight and there's no puckers underneath here so you don't sew over uh, something and, and sew in a pucker. I hope these little craft adventures, I hope you're enjoying them. Whether you're making something with this or not, or whether you're just whether or not it's just giving you ideas on, on how to, you know, improve your life in some way. That's what I'm about. Okay, we're coming to the end, and I am going to backstitch once more. I've got this last pin in here, and I'm going I might have to give myself a little bit of a pucker right there. Take the pin out so I don't sew over the pin. And there we go. With my, I don't have a fancy sewing machine. You don't have to have a fancy sewing machine to start out with. Oh, this is just my old singer and I love it. I missed another pin. Oops. Oh, the old gray goose ain't what she used to be. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to flip it over. I hadn't finished this up. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a large zigzag stitch. There we go. This will help keep it from fraying. I'm using this line as my guide. Okay. We get this done, I'll be right back. Alright, we've got that all sewn and done. Now let's pray that these curtains are the same length as the other set. <laughs> it's so hard to get that part right. And if you have to, I have a steam setting on my dryer and I just put these right through the steam dryer for about seven to eight minutes, 15 minutes tops. And because this right here is almost like a vinyl feeling backing and since I have two different fabrics here and the steam setting definitely will get any wrinkles out of your curtains. It, I mean that or you can use like the little hand steamer. That's fine too. Okay, so here's that curtain up against that blue gray wall coming on to the silver curtain and my brown bamboo shades. I think it came together really nicely. I think it's just beautiful. I am very very happy with that and I just have the perfect amount here hanging on the floor. So now I'm just going to take my measurements off of this and we will be right back. I'm going to get the other one hung up. Yep, we're missing one. 
and then we're going to come back and we're going to finish putting together the dining room be sure and hit that subscribe button i know that i've been away but you can see that i've been very busy this was like painting a two-story house um, just because of the 14 foot ceilings so it took a lot i painted all the trim and doors it, and we're going to give you the tour as soon as I'm done. And I still have yet to paint the rest of the furniture in this room as well. So my paint's here, and we're ready to rock and roll. We'll be painting it soon. So come back. We're going to put this room together. So you have to look online and see how much something like this custom would cost you. But they're absolutely stunning and they look beautiful up against these gray blue walls. Alright, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We have more coming up. Blessings!